with um, your keywords because a lot of people do get phone calls for maid service. So you gotta be super careful. And obviously, we'll, go, we'll kind of go over how you can make sure what negative keywords to use so you don't get up, show up for maid service. Hence okay. the jelly cleaning. Yeah. Is that what drove that or what? Yeah, um, so no, yes and no, but Jedi cleaning, um, when I did do Jedi cleaning, I didn't do house cleanouts yet, but with Jedi junk removal, and I decided to add house cleanouts, I was gonna do cleaning. Right. I was getting a lot of cleaning <laughs> calls. Right, right, right. And yes, and that, I wouldn't say that was the inspiration, but it probably was part of it, yeah. Jedi Cleaning guys, by the way, I was going to start a cleaning company, but I, it was just too much work to start a software company. I just couldn't do it. Um, massive opportunity there, though, if you guys want to start a sister company um, and even market to your current customers. If you do cleaning, just get a couple awesome ladies. We got some awesome ladies off Craigslist. I feel bad because they're incredible and I can't even utilize them. But um, yeah, um, so that's the basic structure, okay, guys? So. Here's a dashboard. This is my, when I started running ads on January 1st of 2022, I couldn't get access to my old account. The guy that I sold the company to did not respond to me. I'm a little irritated, but this was my first Google account that I started with. As you can see this break right here, do you guys know what that is? I paused my ads and I tried JRA. Oh. <laughs> then I went back to my own ads. <laughs> um, so, sorry JRA, you guys are great, but didn't work out for me. So in this period of these three months, this was when I first started my junk removal company in September 2021, and I started running the ads. Um, September, August, August or September, so probably November or something. But as you can see, conversions, we talked about conversions, CPL, cost per lead, same thing, marketing term is cost per lead. Um, my cost per conversion, if you average it out over these three months, what does it say? $55. Now, I have email form submission and phone number. Now, this is where a lot of people panic too, is some days you'll get this. That's fucking ridiculous, right? But you gotta trust Google's algorithm, okay? We're gonna talk about Google's algorithm, max, uh, maximize clicks, target CPA, all this stuff we'll talk about, but you will have days where it's retarded, okay? And Google, you just have other junk Google companies bidding against each other, bidding against each other, and sometimes the cost just gets higher, and you can't let that freak you out. This freaks me out. $300 for one fucking phone call? That's ludicrous. But you gotta understand the long game of Google. It will average out, okay? That's why you need money in the bank, because you might have a bad first freaking week. You might have a bad first two weeks. Your negative keywords aren't set up properly. You're bad on the phone. Um, Google's figuring out the out, Google's algorithm is just trying to get you in the mix with all the other people. So you can't let this freak you out. You'll see I had 761 clicks and a conversion rate. The conversion rate is how many, go ahead. Sorry, so if you're first starting out, you wanna lower your cap to like 150 just so you can figure out what you're yep. doing and we're, see if you hit that ceiling. So we're actually gonna talk about how to protect against this. So there's a way to avoid this in the beginning, right? Once you eventually set your campaign to target CPA, I'll explain that later, I'm gonna teach you guys how to protect yourselves against this um, and kind of like slowly ramp yourself up. Um, agencies don't do this for you. It's, it's too much work, it's too time consuming. Agencies will do the bare minimum because they have other clients. Like they'll set, they'll set your uh, target $150 a day and they'll, they'll stuff it with all the negative keywords that they use with all the other clients, which you would think in theory would work, but it's surprising each county has their own weird keywords that people type in, right. and you'll start paying for keywords, you're like, fuck, I don't wanna pay for that. And then you're just burning through money because they put a cap, and they're trying to collect data, because data is very important. You, you cannot play this game without data, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but you need data. You, data is clicks. You need people to search and click. Without searches and clicks, Google doesn't know where to put you or what to do. So what they do is like, hey, so 150 bucks a day, we're gonna collect data for a month and then we'll fine tune. That is the, the, that's a way to do it if you are rich, but yeah, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Jedi, Jedi, before you switch over real quick, uh, I wanna uh, ask you a question. Uh, what is, I know you're focusing more on Google ads and they're one that produces feeds. Now, what differs them from Thumbtack, Yelp, and uh, what's the other one I used uh, and got raped? 
Um, Angie's? Angie's list, yes. Yeah. So, so Thumbtack, yeah. Yelp, and Angie's, those are... Do they, do they run the same way like this? No, no, this? so big difference. The difference of those two is they sell, okay, so Thumbtack sells your lead to multiple people. Right. So you're bidding against other people. Yeah, it's a rat race. Yelp yeah. is the same thing. If somebody, look, even as, if somebody goes and types in junk removal and they click on you, and this is so, this is so lame. You can, I used to pay for this Yelp feature where if they message a junk removal company in your area, let's say I directly search junk removal and I directly click you, not even an ad. Don't even, you're not advertising on Yelp and I click on you. Right. And I message you. Right. Yelp has an option for other companies to pay to know when somebody messages you. And then Yelp sends that lead that they message you to five other people. Even if they message you directly, Yelp notifies, hey, this person just, so you're bidding against, so these are lead generators, lead aggregators, whatever you want to call them, but Thumbtack sells to three people, Yelp sells to five people, Angie sells to X amount of people. So you're bidding, it's a race to the bottom from the beginning. Now, can you survive off those? These, these Google ads, Google, they cater to you? Google is, I'm looking for, I'm, I'm typing in junk removal near me, I am clicking on you and calling you. So you and the customer are on the phone. You have all the opportunity to close with your 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 Rico Suave, your, your personality, your riz, as the Gen Z kids say. Charisma. The riz, as the young ones say. So um, hot leads and are willing to pay the most. Thumbtack, hot, they're looking for it, hot leads, but it's also a race to the bottom. They're looking for the cheapest. Now it's not to say you're not gonna get price shoppers and cheap people on Google. But in general, average out, Google people will pay the most. I had a hundred fifteen thousand dollar job. Uh, if you guys have seen my YouTube video is, from Google, is that because they got that uh, Google guarantee where they're verified and they're trying to? So like Google, it wasn't a Google guarantee. Lead. We'll talk about Google guarantee. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. I totally forgot to put Google guarantee in here. But uh, we'll talk about Google local services in a minute. But yes, that Google guarantee helps too. But Google guarantee is getting expensive too. It's getting really expensive. So conversion rate, guys, is how well is the landing page doing? How many people click and how many people call? So if the average click, and by the way, guys, if you don't know how Google works, you're paying per click, right? If somebody types in junk removal at 9 a.m., it may cost $15 for that click. If somebody types in junk removal at 2 a.m., you should be running your ads at 2 a.m., but if you were, that click might cost $5. So the, the amount per click changes based on how many people are bidding at what time and what ads are running and how many competitors, but you're paying per click. So how many clicks to how many phone calls is the conversion rate? You guys are shooting for a minimum of 15% conversion rate on your landing page. So if you do this yourself, 15%. These numbers are skewed. This is probably 20%, 20 to 25. And it's skewed because one of my phone call settings in the beginning when I set up my, my ads, when you set up conversion tracking, by the way, are you guys following? A lot? Is, are we? Is, oh yeah. Minimum 15 conversion. That's the absolute minimum. You can still probably make some money. Your average job size is at least in the 400s. Um, but shoot for 20 to 25. And how you boost your conversion rate is your landing page. A family photo, multiple landing pages, a hot tub one dedicated to a hot tub. You cutting a hot tub with a big ass smile and making landing pages dedicated. Uh, but conversion rate, so that's conversion rate is how many people click on average, if a click is $10, a click, an average click right now in junk removal is about 15 to 20 bucks, it's expensive. So if you do the math, $55 is the national average cost per lead, that's about three, three to four clicks until I get a phone call. Because each click is 15 to 20 bucks, and if it's costing me $55 for a lead, that means on average, three to four people are clicking and then calling. And that's just the name of the game. Not everybody's gonna call that clicks. So, conversion rate. Yeah. And now let's talk about some lingo. Okay, let's go over the lingo real quick. Cost per click. Does everybody understand cost per click? We're paying for the, the keyword we're bidding on. So if we're, if we're bidding on the keyword, get rid of old furniture. And then we also bid on the keyword furniture removal can we all guess which one might be a cheaper click? Get rid of old furniture might be a little bit cheaper. Longer tails, more keywords, less people search it. 
versus furniture removal. So that's just something that we're going to bid on every keyword, and Google's going to tell you how much you're paying on every keyword. Um, conversions and leads. That is conversions. Conversions are just a lead, right? Somebody emails you, somebody calls you. Doesn't mean they're a client yet. Conversion rate, we just talked about. That's how many people actually call you or submit an email form from your landing page. We're shooting for 15% minimum, 25% you're a rock star, you're rich. You'll be able to just put fucking money in and money comes right out. Cost per conversion is what Google calls it, okay? Cost per conversion is what Google calls it. In marketing world, we call this a CPL, cost per lead. What does it cost you to actually get a phone call? CAC, the magic, the magic number. And this only, CAC will really apply to you guys when you actually start putting money into Google Ads and you really start really pouring money into Google Ads. But this is how much money did you spend on ads? Let's do a scenario. We'll do a scenario of me. So this is one way to get CAC. I spend on average $20,000 a month. Okay. $20,000 a month. God, my hand already does suck. Ad spend, 20K. Now, the only way to get your CAC is if you actually track which calls and which what you book from Google. So, if we take 20K and we got 100, uh, let's just say 200 new customers. Now, you'll only know this if you, if you mark this in your CRM, like, hey, this customer came from a Google ad, and that's call tracking. You guys gotta do call tracking too and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But if I got 200 customers, well, not 200 dollars, if I got 20,000, if I spent $20,000 on ads, guys, and I got 200 customers from that, what's my CAC? That's about what I get too. My CAC is 100 bucks. Right, 110. So it's that's roughly. I put in 20 grand. I get 200 new clients every month. So and that's that's the national average. This is what you could potentially get, but it also depends on your population, how many people are searching um, for junk removal in your area. Now it's important to know your average job size so that when you actually calculate your CAC at the end of the month, you know if you're losing money or not. Right. So if this number is higher than your customer acquisition CAC, then your customer acquisition cost, it makes sense. Like you probably want to factor your costs, take off 20%, you know, so take off a hundred bucks, right? So you should go pour money in, pull money out. Um, row ads, just return on ad spend, kind of the same like return on investment, how much money you put in is how much money you get back. Like I told you guys, you want to shoot the 3X minimum, 5X on great ones. So three to 5X. Any questions at all? Yeah, so your cogs are going to be like fuel dump fees, etc. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Most cogs is in junk removal, the labor associated. So just the labor on the job, not the labor. So whatever you think the labor is on the job, and you can just average, you know, do your numbers over the month and kind of average it out. So your labor, your fuel, and your dump fees are the only cogs in this business. But no um, other advertising. Yeah. So you're signed, you're not yeah, not 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 with Google. Because we're tracking your Google. Yeah, we're just tracking yeah. Google. Now, do you should you get your CAC and all that stuff yes. on everything else? Facebook, Yelp, and could you average it out? Yes. But I would strongly recommend keeping Google one hundred percent separate. Exactly. But yes. And then you can compare apples to apples. Yes. Yep, yeah, you can then you can do you can do Facebook. What's your CAC on Facebook and what you bring it back? Um, so why do people lose on Google Ads? Three things. It always starts with negative keywords. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go through negative keywords and I'm gonna give you guys some examples of why, ah, man, I've had so many phone calls of people burning their money and even with other, they hire local, they hire local ad companies. They start with a local company. Like, oh, this company, somebody recommended me and it's just, they burn through their money because this local company doesn't understand junk removal. And I'm gonna to get to that in just a minute, of what I mean, what they don't understand, because there's such important, small, such small, small little things that they don't understand, and they burn the customer's money. 
And we're going to talk about those negative keywords that local advertising companies don't understand. A lot of people hire local guys, not just not just like um, all the ad companies um, out there. There's a group JRA for ads and Top Dog. There's a lot. There's a lot of guys who actually know how to run Google ads. But a lot of people that I talk to hire local guys. I'm going to tell you what they do. And then if not having conversion tracking set up. So without conversion tracking, guys, without conversion tracking, you don't get this magic number. So to get conversion tracking, it's in my course. Right? It's a five hour course. This phone number, Google will know if you call that phone number. And then Google counts that as a conversion. And you can actually, in Google, set how many seconds that phone call needs to be to be a conversion. So my conversions are so high because I set it to one second. So you should set it to five, five seconds for conversion tracking. Now why one second, not five seconds? Because one second, it could be a telemarketer and you hang up right away, right? So you don't want to count the one second ones. Five seconds, you're pretty safe on like, hey, hey, who's this? Click, okay, that's one second. Hey, who's this? Hi, I'm looking for junk removal. Five seconds is probably a safe number. To that's how you answered your phone? Yeah. Uh, and this is, has anybody heard my answering machine? It's really cool, I'll show you guys later. But uh, no, I mean, what did I say? Jedi junk removal, this is Andrew, how can I help you? <laughs> Remember that one? Oh man, fuck. I was on, like, I we got 40 phone calls a day. Wow. Yep. And, okay. It's conversion tracking. Conversion tracking is not set up. Google will never be able to help you. And conversion tracking is probably an hour long of the video just setting up conversion tracking properly in my course. And then, of course, not enough bankroll to make it through the initial data gathering phase. This is what we call the learning phase, the data collection phase. Google figuring out where they're gonna put you. Um, by the way, is this helping guys? Is this, I mean, is this helping? Okay, so one of the most important screens guys, we're gonna start diving in now. Finally, we're gonna get to the juice. This is called the search terms page, okay? This is where Google shows you what people are searching how much, what your conversion rate is for that keyword, what this keyword's costing you, how many clicks. I scrolled down the list and I want you guys to see, this is my campaign. I want you guys to tell me there is a mistake within these keywords. Do you guys see what mistake there might be? There is a keyword in here I should not be bidding on that costs me money. Metal pickup? Boom! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So, now imagine, you, you start a campaign, a local agency, a local advertising agency, scrap metal, he doesn't know to put scrap metal in there, he doesn't know to put metal, he doesn't know these keywords, he doesn't know to put trash, garbage, city, county. There are so many specific, so many negative keywords that local ad agencies don't know and you end up burning money. That cost me 73 fucking dollars and that was just in that one, I don't know when I caught that. It may have cost me three, four hundred, five hundred. So eventually, and then there's a uh, Baxter pickup that I would bid on. I forgot to put Baxter. We'll dive in. So good, good call, good catch. So search terms is your friend. Search terms you will look at religiously every day when running your own campaign. You will go look at every day. What did people search? What did I show up for? Do I need to, do you see how many got, this is the bottom of the list by the way. But if we look at the top guys, check it out. So we have 43 clicks on junk removal. Got junk, junk removal, thousand oaks, blah, blah, blah. Got junk costs. Now this is where you guys have to, this is where you guys have to start using your own gut on, should we, okay, so for me, cost and pricing, I'll bid on those keywords. But do you think with somebody with a low budget, just getting the Google ads and trying to figure this game out, should they bid on keywords that have cost and pricing? Probably not, because they're most likely just literally calling for the cost and pricing. So you can restrict what you don't want to show up for like down to the T, very, very, very detailed. So I bid on everything like cost, pricing, all of that stuff, because at the end of the day, averages out, you do close some of those customers. Okay, so this is just a look at search terms. Uh, as you can see, Furniture removals down here with 16 clicks. And this is just, I was running my ads in the beginning, um, and this is January of 2022. So, and this is only my Ventura campaign. I haven't even started my LA location. So, that gives you an idea. 
right? It shows you your average cost per click for these keywords, $17.32, oh no, $18. Got junk, it's costing $24, what the fuck? Judd had junk removal, $8.44 because, now, if you have really good SEO and you're number one, you probably don't want to bid on your own keyword because you're paying for people to click your own ad, but at the same time, you're also first because um, ads are always above organic results. Anyways, keyword types. Let's talk about keyword types. Does anybody know what this is? Google keyword types. So this is important. This is what we're going to kind of dive deep on a little bit is the big mistakes that local ad agencies, not dedicated junk removal ad agencies should not make this mistake and they probably don't, but a lot of people seem to hire local ad agencies. A lot of guys. Yeah. Um, if you hire like companies like JRA, Top Dog, fuck, I don't even know all the junk removal. I think Lewis is now running ads. I think Matt Fit Matt. Is Matt out there? No, he's, he's okay. Okay, never mind. I think Matt's gonna be starting running Google ads for people too. Um, anyways, broad match, phrase match, exact match. Okay, we'll start with the easy one. Exact match. Guys, if you were to make a campaign and you put one keyword and one keyword only and you put this keyword as exact match in brackets, you would only and forever only show up for junk removal and nothing else. Okay, phrase match, take it a step further. If we put in junk removal and phrase match, that one keyword and keyword only, forever and only, I will show up for, I hate junk removal. <laughs> I love junk removal. Junk removal is the best. Junk removal near me, junk removal dot, do you guys get where I'm going with this? Yeah. You'll show up for everything. So as you can tell, there's kind of a little bit of an art to art to this. Broad match, you will never, ever use, ever. And this pissed me off with ClickSkeek. Um, I love ClickSkeek. Uh, Jam, cut that out. I'm really good friends with Ed, the owner of ClickSkeek. <laughs> um, but cut out all this. <laughs> uh, ClickSkeek does great now, right? They do great. But they had a lot of broad match keywords in the search keywords and the negative keywords. Okay? Now, does anybody know how broad match works? So, this is bizarre. If you put junk removal as a broad match, you will show up for how do I recycle pipe tubing? How do I get rid of a garbage disposal? It is, if there's another word, Better than broad, it is more than broad. So guys, you'll never use broad match in search keywords or negative keywords, just never use it, ever. Um, you're gonna fine tune your campaign with praise and exact match. So these are the keyword types, Google let you do. Google lets you do. Um, so, let's do just, um, let's do a play by play. If we were to just do junk removal, you guys know what we'd show up for, right? And you can have, so we're just gonna cancel that one out, we know that's bad. So if we were to put a keyword in phrase match and exact match, the reason why we have phrase and exact is because I actually wanna track how many people just type in junk removal. So we're gonna put this in brackets because yes, they could just type it in phrase match as well, they could just type it here, but I want a breakdown of this by itself, okay? And then if somebody types in junk removal near me, you know, it, this will all fall under junk removal. So exact match lets you get exactly those keywords. So you might want to put junk removal near me in a bracket as well. And if there's cities you'd like to see how many clicks you get, you need to make an exact match because junk removal, CB Valley, Thousand Oaks, Malibu, Santa Ma, they will all fall under this bracket here. So, which is fine, because you want to show up for all those, but I have all the major cities that I put in exact match because I want to break down the cities and the negative keywords, guys. So, we can probably all assume, we can probably all agree that we want the negative keyword free, right? So, if we were to do the negative keyword free, we wouldn't show up for free, junk removal, right? right? So, and the reason why you want to put it in phrase match, not broad, just free, who knows, if you put a broad free, who knows what Google will stop you from showing up. Obviously, they're gonna to try to, anything related to broad, free, broad, but don't risk it, just put free, and then you can also put cheap, 
whatever you don't want to show up for. I do bid, I do bid on cheap, but if you have a smaller budget and you're trying to fine tune your Google Ads, probably just cut out cheap too. Initially, then you can bring cheap back in later if you guys don't want to have cheap customers. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so this will prevent you from free junk removal or junk removal free. But you know what this doesn't prevent is somebody looking, types in junk removal careers, junk removal jobs, junk. So can you kind of see where people will probably start burning money in local ad agencies? Any, any questions so far? Any questions at all? So um, with that being said, guys, here's kind of an example of my search keywords. Uh, campaigns paused, obviously this is very old, 238 conversions. But as you can see, um, the junk removal phrase, whatever fell under this junk removal phrase, it could have been junk removal. See, I have some exact matches because there's cities I wanted to track. But you guys can kind of see, look, this is a popular one, junk removal cost. Um, get rid of old furniture. So you guys can kind of see the phrases that are getting during those, during those two months. What brought me business? Junk removal phrase, like I said, guys, that could be a lot of things. Junk removal followed by anything. So you do want to do a lot of exact matches if you want to track. Negative keywords. Do you guys see what's wrong here? Calgary? Uh, oh, okay. Do you guys see what might be wrong? Was it in Charlotte? These broad matches. Now, we don't want to show up for cars, career, or car. You would want to put these in phrase match, okay? Because cars is too broad. I don't know, maybe maybe that stops me showing up from, um, what are those things in the water? The fucking ski, yes. uh, jet ski, sorry, my brain. Jet, maybe you don't show up for jet ski, and we take jet skis. Maybe you don't show up for trailer. This is too broad. Google takes broad way too unseriously. It's like, it's, it's, I tested it. This might be preventing you from showing up for all kinds of other stuff. So you need to be so, this is why when you start your own campaign, you have to do this very slowly. You start with a small budget and a small max, max cost per click. We'll get into that towards the end. Because all these keywords are going to come through that you don't want to bid on and you have to add them as a negative keyword and monitor your campaign for about a month. If you guys do this yourself, every day you're going to see little things that come up. You're like, oh, I just bid on this keyword. Crap, I don't want to bid on uh, bag pickup. And then you put bag or bagster because you don't have the ability to do bagsters. What's up? So I've, I've had companies actually call me within the last couple of days about selling me keywords and things like that. So, selling you keywords? Yeah, like they, they want to they, they, they be able to... to um, I guess that's their advertising. Selling your keywords for Google Ads? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, so, no. You, I mean, in your course, you, you kind of help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I 100% go through. Like, okay. it's a, you'll be a, you'll be a pro by the time. We're, we're scratching the surface with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, <laughs> broad match, guys. Now, that just means if you're not going to do broad match, you have to religiously monitor your keywords and add a keyword that comes up, like, Scrap metal might come up, but try to think of every negative keyword. And in my course, I have a list of negative keywords, and I, I go over it, and we go over, we cover most of all the negative keywords because I go through my campaign for like three weeks and show you the keywords that show up. Oh fuck, forgot about this one. Forgot about this one. And then I build a keyword list, a negative keyword list. So that is keywords, guys, and that's where most people burn their money. Okay, and just to give you an example of where people burn their money when I log in to check their campaign and they hired a local can a local company, there was garbage, they were showing up for garbage and they were showing up for trash. Can you imagine blowing a hundred dollars a day on garbage and trash keywords? Another popular one that local ad agencies don't know is city. City pickup. Do we want to pay for the keyword city? No. How about county pickup? Bulky item pickup, in my experience, is a bad keyword because I think it's the city coming to get a free bulky item. They're just blowing their money because these ad agencies don't know that trash 
is customers who think it's going to be free or garbage or city, county, Baxter, um, scrap, scrap metal, recycle, dump, landfill. You've got their career, job. There's hundreds of keywords that you have to protect yourself against or you're just going to burn money. And that's why we start slowly. We're going to talk about how to start slowly with an ad agency. Ad agencies don't do this. They have their negative keyword list. Yes, they'll dump it into yours. They'll, they'll clone a campaign and do yours. But the problem is there's just keywords in each city that we don't think about that you burn through. And this is, this is just, I'm talking about like junk removal Google ad companies. They'll just clone your campaign and they'll just expect that it's just going to work perfectly. And yeah, sometimes it might, but sometimes it doesn't. And you really just need to monitor it religiously if you want a perfect campaign. So let's talk about bidding. You have two major types. There's a couple others, but we don't care about them. You have maximized clicks. So maximized clicks means exactly what it means. It means it's going to try to get you as many clicks as possible based on how much money you're willing to spend. So they'll try to throw you to the top. Google, I think, shows two local service ads. Do you guys know what Google local services is? Does anybody know what Google local services is? We'll talk about it in a minute. So Google local services tends to be first, and it shows two people, and pay for that as well. And then below that, you have Google ads, which it also rotates two or three, three Google ads companies. And then sometimes it'll show the map back, <laughs> And then you get to the organic listings where Ricardo <laughs> likes to play. What's up? Um, when you say local services, is that the same thing as Google Guaranteed? Or is yes, that Google Guaranteed, Google Local Services. Um, we're going to talk about that too. Um, generally, it's been more expensive for me. Google local, Google local Services has been more expensive. I get way... Still use Google Local Services. Give it a try because it's a one-click forget and it just it runs. You can set how much you're willing to pay. And if it works out, it works out great. I got way better results with Google Ads. Astronomically better. Um, I stopped doing Google Ads, Google local services towards the end. Um, it just got too expensive. It was like, I was paying 90 bucks a phone call. Well, I, I stopped it uh, yeah. a few months ago, so yeah, I know. Yeah, and Google Ads, as you can see, you can really fine tune. So, but it takes time. So, maximize clicks, guys. They're gonna try to get you as many clicks as possible with the amount of money you're spending, they're gonna rotate you in those three ads. The more you spend, the more you show up, the higher you show up, because they also have ads at the bottom of the page under the 10 organic results. They have another three. So, but like nobody goes down there, right? Target CPA is Google's magical algorithm that we'll never truly know and understand, but it's Google trying to hit this magic number for you. You can set this magic number. You can set what you want your target CBA to be. So you can set $10. You'll never get it. You'll never show up. So what you want to do is try to figure out what the market's paying. And you'll, my target CBA is set to 55. Now, can I set it to 60 or 70? Probably, and show up more often? Yes, but you want Google to try to be somewhat smart after you've collected data and fine-tuned your ads. Um, you want to switch this because then Google really tries to understand, okay, and this is, this is how sophisticated I do know Google is. Because I, I see it, Google like notifies you. All right, so from Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., we're going to increase our bid because we know more people on Sunday between 4 and 6 are searching. So we increase your cost per click. Um, so you may pay a little bit more per lead, but tomorrow on Monday, we're going to drop it to, and it'll add, whatever the fuck they do with their algorithm, you eventually want to switch to target CPA, but you can't switch to target CPA unless you have data. Data costs money, data costs time, and you're going to be here for one or two months manually managing your campaign, and then you can switch to target CPA. Target cost per acquisition, target cost per action, um, but that's Google's magic, which you do want to switch to after we do maximize clicks. So does it take two months average? I mean, you have to be in it a while before you can Depends do on how much money you're willing to spend, but I'd say two months. Okay. If you're willing to spend a hundred bucks a day, probably a month. Um, but we're gonna start at like 50 bucks a day. In my course, I think we start at maybe even 20, 30 bucks a day. We ramp up slowly and we slowly increase. The ma okay, so maximize clicks tries to get you as much clicks as possible, but there's a setting under maximize clicks called set max cost per click. Meaning, 
how much are you willing to spend on a click? So if we go here, right here, junk removal, $18.23 on average, you know, like the, maybe I was first position, maybe I was second. You can set your max cost per click or your entire campaign that you're willing to pay. And we start as low as $5. Now, are you gonna get shit with $5? No. Probably not, but it's gonna give you an opportunity to see what people are searching so that you can protect yourself.